What are comprehensive exams in graduate school? Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Dave Masnack, I'm talking to you about reciprocity.com, the sharing economy proofreading platform that I'm trying to build. You can check it out. So this is part of a series that I am doing. It's called Thesis Help. So I'm actually a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship at a large state institution in Florida. You can find out that I'm a real person. And what I'm trying to do is actually help you out by providing different tips and tricks for graduate students. This is really, reciprocity is really something that I am trying to actually um, help to, to grow so I can start providing scholarships and stuff like that to graduate students, PhD students, maybe even master students doing um, behavioral science stuff that I think uh, would be interesting and as well as some other things you could check out. Anyways, so what are comprehensive exams? Uh, these are generally um, at least at most American and Canadian and sort of major European business schools. Comprehensive exams is usually like a three-day exam that tests students, graduate students, about any particular question or any particular topic that they learned throughout the previous two years. So the standard model in most business schools now when you do a PhD is you do two years of graduate um, courses. The courses are going to be sort of methodological, learning things about different methods and things like that, um, as well as sort of theory-driven so if you're in strategy, if so, my doctoral students just did their comprehensive exams. They were doing things uh, related to strategy and innovation um, and things along those lines, um, organizational theory, all these different topics that are really relevant to what they do or how they um, understand how an organization works. And then once they do all of that coursework, they will study um, hopefully they'll be studying all along, but they'll be studying at the end. They'll have to probably study for two, three months, maybe even longer, maybe shorter, depending on who you are and if you're amazing um, or not amazing or whatever. I don't know if you're or if you're a worry wart and you want to study for a lot longer. And I don't know, whatever. But um, what they have to do is study for a long time. And then we as faculty and professors, we get to ask any question we want that is relevant to the material that they studied in those two years. So it's actually a really stressful, difficult time. And they will get, um, they'll get anywhere between, it'll be anywhere between two more, most likely three days of questions. And there'll be eight hour days where they'll be studying and thinking, or they'll be writing um, just everything they can possibly think about this different material. They're going to have to know all the different citations of all this literature and bring it all together. So it sounds really difficult and painful, and it is. It is probably one of the most difficult steps when you do a PhD, other than the sort of uncertainty component of it and the sort of mindset component of it. But the comprehensive exams, they're actually, I forgot to mention, they're sometimes called cores at some institutions. They're sometimes called comps. Um, we often refer to them as comps. But uh, basically, it's a, it's a really difficult exam that you have to go through and you have to know all this different material and synthesize it. However, it is really cool because this is a moment in your life and it becomes one of the, it was a highlight for me. It becomes one of the moments in your life where you can summarize all of this literature and make sense of what you've learned for the last two or three years of all this literature. Because before that, you're just thinking, seeing sort of, um, if you could imagine the literature or the, study, the field of what you're studying, maybe you're not in business school or you're not thinking about going to business school and graduate school there, but you're thinking about other sort of PhDs and they'll have this whole body of literature. You can think that body of literature is an elephant and you are sort of grasping at different components of that or different elements of that ele uh, elephant when you're taking different courses. So you might be you know, grabbing the ear, for example, you might be grabbing the, the trunk, for example, but you can't see the big picture until you sit down and you put it all together. And that's what happens during a comprehensive exam is you put it all together and all of a sudden everything's like, whoa, you know, like you're just going, 
what is this? All of a sudden you see the world totally differently and you see the literature totally differently. And that is really amazing. And that's what we're trying to ignite when you do these comprehensive exams, when we had these comprehensive exams to sort of ignite in you this ability to sort of piece things together and mix and match things together. Um, so what could be some tips and tricks for studying for the, the, the comprehensive exams? First of all, just study every single day and study between anywhere between, you know, six to 12 hours, depending on what your ability is. Don't study more than that because it's the long haul game. It's not a short haul game. If you're trying to cram it all at once, it ain't going to work very well. Um, if you, the other thing to think about is try to look at phenomenon around you. And you look at all this phenomenon and try to explain it using the different theories that you have and think about how can you explain it, practice explaining these different phenomenon using the theories that you have. That's a really, that was a great piece of advice that I had um, and allowed me to see the world in, in um, many different ways. The third thing I'd recommend for you to do is practice creating um, sort of mini experiments or mini scientific studies of different phenomenon around you using this literature. That's going to help you out a lot in um, being able to explain sort of systematically the literature. And the final thing is just practice sort of compare and contrast questions of the different literatures that you have, the different theories that you've understood along the way, um, different methods along the way. That's going to help you as well because those are general. Those are sort of general questions that a lot of people like to ask on the exam. How much you know about this, and can you compare that with this, and things like that, right? So that's all I wanted to tell you. Um, and uh, if you like these videos, make sure you do subscribe. I'm doing these every Friday. The thesis help questions. Um, they're going to be out every Friday. Generally, it's geared towards people thinking about graduate school, wanting to go to graduate school, current PhD students. Um, and because I'm a professor of innovation in the business school, I, I, it's going to be very much focused on the business school applications, right? And getting into maybe business school, for example, and doing a PhD um, in a business school. So you can think about that. I, and and the, the other thing, if you like these videos, do subscribe. Um, those of you who are already subscribed, you are so cool. You're amazing. And uh, if you like the reciprocity project, you want to check it out, just go with it. It's reciprocity spelled with a three, not an E. And go and check that out and see what I'm doing. Uh, you can purchase credits if you want. That's going to go into, I'm trying to do this to actually start providing um, scholarships and stuff like that for graduate students that are doing behavioral science in business school. So you can check it out. Um, Anyways, that's it. Have a good day, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.